Hello YouTube, it's Sonny here with Hobbies of Man once again, and today we are doing another chapter re review for Kaiju number 8. Today we're going to be looking at chapter 57 of Kaiju number 8 that just released this Thursday, and um, it was pretty good. I, I was pretty interested in, in, in what it means for the series. So uh, before we get into that, the news segment today basically just um, is that volume 6 has released. It's a very nice cover. It's all black, and it has Mr. Isao Shinomiya on the cover. He's doing his like power pose and it's very very cool i really liked it a lot i thought it was really well done and it just released uh wednesday i think and um there's been a few different kind of things uh that the japanese uh kaijin debris um twitter account has been posting like there was these special postcards and some people have been able to buy some t-shirts and it's very interesting it's very cool hopefully we get something similar to that uh, going on here in the West at some point. I know that the Spanish editions of stuff will probably have something nice going for them, but I'm not too sure what they're going to have, um, but I am looking forward to it. So, yeah, I already own the first volume in, in English and in Japanese. I might just buy it in Spanish from Mexico as well once it comes out just to uh, have one of each and kind of compare them and contrast them because they should be slightly different. Um, but, yeah, in terms of a recap... Basically, last chapter was spent with Hoshina and number 10 kind of deliberating and kind of debating and then kind of sharing information with each other in order to um, figure out how to beat number num number nine. Basically, Hoshina walks in and uh, number 10 is like, I'll tell you whatever I, what you want. It says number, number nine created me, but I want you to turn me into a numbers weapon so that I can be used to fight. Um, because number 10, like the one thing that he wants to do is fight. So, um, that was basically all that happened last, uh, chapter. And this chapter, chapter 57 has 26 pages and basically is a kind of, uh, meeting slash, uh, exposition kind of, uh, section before the action kind of starts going. I'm curious to see how it's, uh, how it's going to go because we're only just now learning anything about the kaiju but i'm curious to see how it's gonna go and how how long the series is gonna go because i can easily see it just you know ending after they get rid of number nine as long as you know it's done well it could actually just finish in about 150 chapters um i mean we're only 50 chapters through but you know kafka has already gone a bunch of his um his um his character arc developed we got an introduction of a new character, you know, Kikoru and Reno, and I'm hoping that this is going to go long, you know, 400 plus chapters, but I can easily see it finishing at 150 if everything in this arc goes well. Like, if it can, if the Magaka decides to do it and they do it, you know, concisely and just kind of make one or two more bad guys before they kind of fight number nine again. I think it could work, but I really want it to be a very long running series. So yeah, let's get actually into the discussion uh, of this, of the uh, chapter. So basically it starts at um, Japanese Defense Force HQ. There's these lab guys in an elevator. They're going up the elevator and talking. And basically they're, they're, they're kind of uh, chatting about how Division 3 is going to come by uh, to headquarters to share some information they got from number 10, but it's going to be rowdy. And uh, the reason that it's going to be rowdy is actually explained to us in a bit when Kafka and Kikoru are training and are called to do a timeout by Mr. Sage Hagesawa. And um, basically, um, they're talking and then he asks for where Narumi is and then they say that Narumi walked off with some other um, some other officers somewhere. And uh, then Hagesawa explains to us that number divisions one and three kind of hate each other because they both run in the same turf and um they kind of get on like cats and dogs and then we switch over to a uh, a new scene and it's basically this kind of like standoff scene and it kind of reminds me of like delinquent manga i don't know why it looks very like like they're just delinquent kids and they're just kind of like getting ready to fight and i think it's pretty funny i liked it and um like I said, they hate each other, and what happens is that Narumi and Proshina are having a bit of a dick measuring contest. They're trying to see who's better, and uh, Hoshina basically wins the exchange after a little bit. And I'm curious to see why it is that Narumi reacts so strongly to uh, Hoshina, because Hoshina doesn't really seem like the type of guy 
to really go out of his way to, you know, antagonize anyone else. And I'm curious to see how his relationship with, um, with Mina is because I can't really see him being as antagonistic to Mina as he is to Hoshina. So I'm curious to see how that goes. But uh, we don't really get to see them interact like that um, all that much in this uh, chapter. You know, Hoshina wins and then they finish fighting over dumb stuff. And then we get a scene shift where they're now at this meeting hall. And then um, two of the people are like zoomed in, like in, in a Zoom call. And everyone else is, uh, you know, live. And um, we get to meet a few more characters. So, of course, the first division is run by Narumi Hasegawa. And then we have the leader of the second division called Yura Igarashi. And then Mina and Hoshina take care of the third division. And the captain of the fourth division is called Yugo Ogata, which is a very interesting uh, pair of characters there. Yura Igarashi and Yugo Ogata seem to be um, kind of interesting characters. Um, Igarashi has like braces on his face and he seems to be young but very large and uh, Ogata seems to be like an older suave guy so it's, that's cool um, not like significantly older than everyone else but definitely older than like Hoshina and and um, and, uh, and Mina who are around 30 years old there's a lot of byplay there we get to see that these people know each other they probably um, either grew up together like practicing together and used to be on the same team or they would just kind of know each other from working together in the JDF. I'm very curious to see what the what the background for them is, but it is kind of interesting. And um, then Itami, the old guy that was friends with Isao, um, gets them all back on track. And basically, um, Division 1 can't take care of Number 9 alone because Number 9 has the ability to create super powerful kaiju like Number 10, who happens to only have been a prototype. And number 10 even tells us that he wants to fight the finished products. And this kind of helps us understand why number 10 wants to be, uh, you know, worn by Hoshina. He wants to take down number nine and number 10, uh, 11 and 12 and whoever else comes after him, right? So it kind of makes sense. Number nine uh, has the ability to make a super powerful Kaiju, like the Super Saiyan of Kaiju. And that's concerning, and that's why everyone needs to work together, or else Japan will die, which is a very kind of interesting kind of uh, phrase to end on. And we get to see this awesome scene of uh, Mystery Sal number nine sitting on this like kaiju throne surrounded by these like uh, pupa, I guess, filled with like xenomorph looking kaiju skeletons. And I thought that was super cool, very badass, very interesting. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting time, and I'm very curious to see where everything goes. So in terms of theories, I don't really have that many, but if number nine can create Kaiju, and number nine is really obsessed with Ka Kafka's power, is that because Kafka's power comes from a Kaiju he created that went AWOL? And if that's the case, why hasn't number nine explicitly said this before, right? And... Maybe it's not the case. Maybe he thinks that someone else is creating Kaiju as well and he wants Kafka to, uh, to learn his secrets and then um, beat the other Kaiju. I'm not sure and I'm very curious to see how this goes. But overall, that's everything I have to say. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let me know what you thought. What do you guys think about this chapter? And what do you guys think is the trajectory of the story? Do you guys think Kafka was made by number nine? Do you think the little bug kaiju that got into Kafka was made by number nine, but you guys think it's a whole different ka uh, kaiju that is also able to create um, other kaiju or, you know, what's going on here? Let me know what you guys think and uh, thank you guys very much for watching. See you guys later.